um, Representative Armstrong for his five minutes. Happy birthday, Madam Chair. Uh, before I start, I'd like to seek unanimous consent to enter into the record a letter from the American Land Title Association and 17 other organizations in support of HR 3, 3962. And I think your staff has got that letter this morning. Without objection. See, without objection, so ordered. All right. H.R. 3962, the SECURE Act, is legislation to permit the nationwide use of remote online notarization, which is simply an electronic notarization where the party and the notary are in different locations. Even before the pandemic, we were rapidly transitioning to a world where the business is conducted through remote and electronic transactions. You can bank via remote electronic transaction, testify in a hey, judicial proceeding. Don't tell my thing. I was, had the text real quick, and I wanted to ask why it happened. Because... So And you can even draft estate documents that will eventually need to be notarized. There simply is no reason we should not allow allow, allow remote online notarization. Mr. O'Neill, um, is remote online notarization the equivalent or even superior to in-person notarization? Thank you, Representative Armstrong. Thank you again for your uh, strong bipartisan leadership on this bill. I think comparing remote online notarization with traditional notarization is really instructive. Uh, obviously, remote notarization is more convenient, but actually it's also safer and more reliable, too. Uh, you can see that in several ways. One is the ID verification process. In a remote online notarization, you use the latest technological tools with multi-factor authentication, which is far superior to a notary trying to detect whether an a ID that's handed to the notary is fraudulent or not. Second is that remote notarization results in a much more robust audit trail, uh, an audio video recording. Traditional notarizations oftentimes don't have any evidence. Only a few states even require a notary to keep a paper journal. Uh, finally, the outcome of the notarization. A traditional notarization results in a paper document uh, with notarization typically at the end. And it's relatively easy to slip page or modify the document. Remote notarization, by contrast, results in a tamper-sealed electronic document. You see exactly what the document was when it was notarized and any changes made afterwards. And finally, I'll, of course, just add that uh, both consumer and notary health and safety concerns uh, make the remote option attractive and have bring stronger consumer protections. Yeah, as someone who's tried cases for a living, I agree that video evidence is highly probative and save considerable judicial resources. I've been, I've been a notary for two different professions, and I always wanted to get the one where you could actually pinch the paper and have the raised seal, but alas, I only ever had the stamp. So uh, I don't know. I don't know if there's a special level of notary you get to where you get that or if they just uh, were transitioning in the state of North Dakota. But what groups of people are most likely to benefit from expanded access remote online notarization services? Well, obviously, all American consumers can benefit from remote services. But of course, uh, think of the sick or elderly, people who are child caregivers, any uh, immobilized Americans, or of course, anyone exercising social distancing can obviously benefit from remote notarization. I'll also highlight any Americans who are traveling overseas, including service members. If you're overseas, you often have to travel long distances to find an embassy or consulate to get a document notarized. Remote notarization allows you to connect with the U.S. notary in real time, and the resulting document is an electronic document that can be used instantly in the United States, as opposed to trying to find a way to get a paper document notarized overseas shipped back home for use. So I think it benefits all Americans. I actually remember when uh, we had a lot of National Guards men and women deployed to Iraq, uh, we had people in North Dakota that would specifically go over there essentially as couriers to get documents notarized from overseas, overseas uh, guardsmen and women. And it, I mean, it just it, it was fascinating that even at that point in time that we couldn't figure out a better way to do it. But this bill doesn't seek to federalize the regulation of notaries or otherwise replace authority of states to regulate notaries, right? That's correct. This bill does not replace the states as the primary authority for both commissioning and regulating notaries. It simply provides a legal foundation and minimum consumer protections that states can exceed. And in fact, every state uh, should be encouraged to add additional consumer protections and regulate notaries as they traditionally have done. And there's nothing in this bill that uh, mandates a specific use of any particular technology either, is there? 
that's an extremely important point. This technology, this bill is technology neutral. Does not mandate the use of any specific technologies so the notaries can continually take advantage of whatever latest technologies, fraud deterring technologies come along? Oh, and I just want to, I'll just end with, I, you know, I've actually had a lot of fun working with Representative Dean on this issue. Uh, we've got to do some different things and it's not a trivial thing. Uh, the pandemic showed us that people, and particularly with housing markets and highly competitive things, that this is really something that is more than just advancing technology. This can help people in a very real way while still protecting everything that notaries do. So I appreciate the chance to do this. Thank you for your testimony. And with that, I'll yield back. Thank you. Um, and